know that most of what you've seen, read, or heard about Billy the Kid is untrue? My name is Gail Cooper. I'm a medical doctor and forensic psychiatrist. My specialty is murder case consultation for the defense. For 20 years, I've used my expertise to uncover the real Billy the Kid. Researching over 40,000 pages of archival documents and books, I've written the revisionist history. It's shocking, it's liberating, and I've written books demolishing the hoaxes, hijacking the history. My talks will share with you what I've found. Cover-ups, misinformation, and fakery, to use Old West lingo, will bite the dust. This talk gives my revisionist history of Santa Fe Ring members in Billy the Kid history. The information is from my book, The Santa Fe Ring vs. Billy the Kid, The Making of an American Monster. Santa Fe Ring boss Thomas Benton Catron's minions, from henchmen to hitmen, called each other friends. Unlike the Mafia, members took no oaths though they became Masons. They were united by secret guilt for Catherine's depraved plots. They were united by Catherine's payoffs. They were united by shielding from prosecution. Billy Bonney knew the injustice. In his April 16, 1881, Messia News interview, after his hanging sentence, he said, I think it hard that I should be the only one to suffer the extreme penalty of the law. To demonstrate the injustice, I'll present their crimes, their lifelong rewards from Katrin, and their sanitized obituaries. In Lincoln County, Katrin's minions went back to his 1866 territorial arrival. He engaged in money lending and military beef contracts. On screen are Fort Stanton's Sutler store partners who later built the Lincoln General Store called The House. From left to right, their clerk James Dolan, Emil Fritz, an unnamed clerk, and Lawrence Murphy. Fritz Murphy and Dolan served Catron's Lincoln County mercantile and ranching monopolies. On screen is Emil Fritz, co-founder of the Sutler store with its government contract frauds. He died in 1874. Catherine used his life insurance policy proceeds for a malicious prosecution embezzling case against anti-ring Alexander McSween and John Tunstall. In fact, McSween's honest delay in paying local heirs was merely diligent seeking of other heirs in Germany. Fritz was born on March 3, 1832, in Germany. He had 10 siblings. He immigrated to America in the 1840s. He entered the military and came to New Mexico Territory with General James H. Carlton's column. He re-enlisted in Fort Sumner, then served at Fort Stanton. He then made its sutler store with fellow soldier Lawrence Murphy. In 1874, he died in Germany. On screen is Lawrence G. Murphy, co-founder of the corrupt Sutler store with Emil Fritz. That became Lincoln's general store, nicknamed The House. Catron's attempted mercantile monopoly through it contributed to John Tunstall's murder and the Lincoln County War. Born about 1831 in Ireland, Murphy graduated college and came to New Mexico Territory. In 1861, he joined the Army at Fort Union, serving under Kit Carson in the Navajo Wars. In 1865, he served under General James H. Carlton in Fort Sumner. In 1866, he mustered out with other Carlton soldiers, William Brady and Emil Fritz. Murphy and Fritz made the Fort Stan Sutler store as L.G. Murphy and Company. They employed Brady and a James Dolan. 
1873, the business was expelled after Dolan tried to murder a soldier, exposing their corruption, with Murphy as possible accomplice. With Catherine's backing, they built a Lincoln store, nicknamed The House. Murphy and Fritz cheated local farmers with usurious loans and underpaying for produce. In 1874, when Fritz died, Murphy made Dolan his partner. In 1875, Murphy was possibly behind the hitman murder in Lincoln of his political rival, rancher Robert Casey. Murphy later left politics after being caught embezzling Lincoln County taxes. In 1876, he got Frederick Godfroy appointed as Mescalero Reservation Indian agent to collude in his supply scams. In 1877, he retired. On October 20th, 1878, he died. Catron took over his Carrizozo ranch to settle Murphy's debt to him. Murphy's Masonic Lodge's tribute was by ring-eyed Henry Waldo from Catron's law firm. It stated, he was recognized and beloved as a man of unblemished honor and integrity. He held a position of prominence and influence in the territory. On screen is James J. Dolan, a violent sociopath and multiple murderer. His Lincoln store, J.J. Dolan and Company, backed by Catron, was known as The House. It was bankrupted by John Tunstall's competition. In 1878, Dolan, with others, was involved first in murdering Tunstall, then in murdering Lincoln County War anti-ring fighters, including Alexander McSween. He recognized Billy Bonney's threat to the ring and tried to enlist him in a February 18, 1879, so-called peace meeting. In 1879, he murdered attorney Houston Chapman and tried to murder attorney Ira Leonard in an attempt to stop their prosecution of ring-eyed commander N.A.M. Dudley for his Lincoln County War intervention. Dolan was born on May 22, 1848 in Ireland, coming to America as a child. In the Civil War's Union Army, he was discharged at Fort Stanton and worked in its L.G. Murphy & Company Sutler store as a clerk. In 1873, he got the business expelled by trying to murder a soldier, exposing its corruption. The store relocated to Lincoln as the house. In 1877, he assumed control after Emil Fritz's death and Lawrence Murphy's retirement. He partnered with Catron's cattle broker, John H. Riley, to form J.J. Dolan and Company. In 1877, he murdered a Hilario Jaramillo as a possible favor to the house's builder, George Pepin, who then married Jaramillo's widow. In 1878, when the house went bankrupt, he mortgaged it and its 40 acres to Catron. In 1878 and 1879 were Dolan's murders of Tunstall, Lincoln County War opponents, and Houston Chapman. He was indicted for the Tunstall and Chapman murders. Dolan was rewarded by Catron. He got Tunstall's store and ranch. The ranch was renamed the Felis River Cattle Company in partnership with other paid-off ringites, John Riley, and William Reinerson. Dolan was president and general manager. In 1883, he was elected Lincoln County treasurer. In 1888, he was elected to the Territorial Senate. In 1889, he became receiver of the U.S. Land Office in Las Cruces. He died on February 26, 1898. His March 2nd Santa Fe, New Mexican obituary oh, declared, he was a man whose personal integrity was without blemish, whose word was as good as his bond, and whose geniality, generosity, and other manly qualities attracted to him many friends. 
his death is generally deplored as a loss to the territory. Dolan's profuse letters to Catherine concern loans, politicking, and using Catherine as an attack dog. On June 11, 1895, he wrote, you no doubt have noticed that cowardly, slanderous article against me published in the Santa Fe, New Mexican of the third instant. If there's any way to punish the outfit, I want you to do it. On screen is John H. Riley, Catherine's cattle dealer, an attempted murderer and partner in the house's J.J. Dolan and Company. He was in District Attorney William Reinerson's friends Riley and Dolan plot to kill John Tunstall. During the Lincoln County War, he was in Santa Fe as liaison to Catron. Riley was born on May 12, 1850 in Ireland. He immigrated to America with his family in 1862. In 1865, he worked as a Colorado railroad contractor. In New Mexico Territory, he clerked for a beef contractor near the Mescalero Indian Reservation and had a ranch near Fort Stanton and may have met Catron in 1866 through these businesses. In 1875, he tried to murder anti-ring Hispanic leader Juan Patron in Lincoln. In 1877, he became a partner in the house. In 1878, he was involved in Tunstall's murder and the Lincoln County War murders of freedom fighters. Riley was rewarded, along with James Dolan and William Reinerson, by getting Tunstall's Felis River Ranch, named by them the Felis Cattle Company. He also partnered with Charles Fritz's son, Emil Fritz, in a ranch. He was assessor of Doniana County. With Catron, he co-owned the American Cattle Company, Tularosa Land and Cattle Company, the Terra Amarillo Land Grant, and the Santa Teresa Land Grant. He died in 1916. His February 25th obituary in the Deming Graphic stated, John H. Riley was a pioneer of the Southwest. He was the owner of large cattle interests in Lincoln County in the early 80s and through receiving a large beef contract from the government, he became the butt of a bitter feud that figured prominently in what is remembered as the Lincoln County War in which he and his friends were victors. His fortune is estimated at $250,000. That's almost $6 million today. Riley's letters to Katrin often included James Dolan and William Reinerson. On February 5, 1890, he described attacking their political rival by defamatory affidavits and harassment. He wrote, I today mailed Senator Edmonds my affidavit corroborated by Dolan against Fisk. Reinerson writes me he is making it hot for him. Do all you can to down him, but do not let it appear as coming from you. On screen is Edgar A. Walsh, Katrin's wife's brother. During the Lincoln County War period, he managed Katrin's Carrizozo Land and Cattle Company Ranch and the house in Lincoln after Katrin took possession. In 1880, working with James Dolan, he tricked Secret Service operative Azariah Wild into thinking Billy Bonney headed a huge rustler counterfeiter gang and should be captured or killed. Walsh was born in Minnesota on March 3, 1859. In 1876, he moved to New Mexico Territory in 1878, Katrin put him in charge of his ranch and Lincoln's store. Later, Walsh started businesses while begging Katrin for money. His New York Times obituary stated, he left home as a lad to seek his fortune in the Southwest. He established himself in the cattle business and for years managed a large ranch in New Mexico. 
Walsh's letters show access to Ringeyed Heights through Catherine. His June 8, 1897 letter asked Catherine to get Ring co-boss S.B. Elkins to invest $15,000 in his hotel company. That's over $466,000 today. David M. Easton was Catherine's business agent stationed within the Mescalero Indian Reservation to work with Indian agent Frederick Godfroy to defraud government contracts for the House. During the Lincoln County War, as Justice of the Peace, he wrote false arrest warrants against Alexander McSween and Billy Bonney. Easton was born in Pennsylvania on September 3rd, 1846. He joined the military in 1865 and deserted in 1870. After the Lincoln County War, he was in the legislature, worked in dry goods, and was a postmaster. He died on April 21st, 1917. The October 21st, 1881, Rio Grande Republican had written, David M. Easton is one of the pioneers of this district. He is favorably known in the territory. Easton's letters to Catherine match those of Catherine's other begging lackeys and affidavit fakers. On April 8, 1889, he wrote, I would like your assistance in obtaining from me some employment by which I can be able in time to pay you what I owe. Riley and Reinerson both promised me that they would see that I was taken care of. As to the affidavit I gave regarding their desert land entries, it was in their favor. It directly and flatly contradicted every witness. On screen is Saturnina Baca, a Lincoln resident and murderer who betrayed the Hispanic cause of the Lincoln County War. He aided the fatal intervention by Commander N.A.M. Dudley in the final battle by lying that he needed protection for his wife and children from Alexander McSween. That made Baca responsible with others for the murders of Alexander McSween, Vincente Romero, Harvey Morris, and Francisco Zamora, and arson of McSween's home. Baca was born on November 11, 1830, in the territory. In the Civil War, he became a captain. Serving in Fort Stanton, he met its ring-eyed veterans at its sutler store. In 1867, after discharge, he settled in Lincoln. In 1868, he used Catron, among others, to pass a bill forming Lincoln County. In 1871, a Fort Stanton complaint documented his conspiracy with Emil Fritz and Lawrence Murphy to supply inferior hay to Fort Stanton. In 1878, he was caught stealing hundreds of pounds of coffee, sugar, and other supplies from the Mescalero Indian Reservation, likely for the house. That year, he helped defeat the Lincoln County War Freedom Fighters. In 1882, he murdered black Lincoln resident George Washington, who had eloped with one of his daughters. In 1897, he was on the New Mexico Board of Prison Directors. In 1909, he was master at arms of the New Mexico legislature. Baca died on March 7, 1925 in Lincoln. In 1961, a Tom Charles, in an essay titled The Father of Lincoln County, called him one of Lincoln County's most loved citizens. It stated that Baca, Murphy, and Brady were, quote, citizens seeking establishment of better law and order in southeastern New Mexico. Baca's March 28, 1892 letter to Catherine shows confident cronyism as he requested help for Francisco Baca's reimbursement for Indian depredations. 
he added imperiously, please let me know if the claim has been allowed or what shape it is in. Catron's ring enforcers in the Lincoln County War period carried out his malicious prosecutions, terrorism, murder, and obstruction of justice. On screen is Samuel Beach Axtell, the ring bribe governor from 1875 to 1878, who assisted Catron's crushing of the anti-ring uprising in Lincoln County. His illegal proclamation outlawing the regulators, including Billy Bonney, was to block arrest of Tunstall's ring murderers. Axtell also replaced non-ring sheriff John Copeland with ring-eyed George Pepin. All that contributed to the Lincoln County War murders of Alexander McSween and his men. Born on October 14, 1819 in Ohio, Axtell became a lawyer. He was a district attorney in California. In 1874, he was appointed by President Ulysses S. Grant as governor of Utah. In 1875, he was transferred to New Mexico Territory to replace deceased Governor Marsh Giddings. In Colfax County, in 1875 and 1876, he shielded from prosecution ring murderers of anti-ring leader Franklin Tolby by illegally removing the courts. He also plotted murders of other anti-ring opponents there. In 1878, he shielded Tunstall's ring-eyed murderers and contributed to the Lincoln County War. After the war, he was scapegoated by removal as governor to hide boss T.B. Catron as the responsible U.S. official. In 1882, with ring bosses S.B. Elkins and T.B. Catron's backing, he was appointed chief justice serving to 1885. He died on August 6, 1891. On August 13, the Santa Fe New Mexican ran his Supreme Court eulogy by fellow ringites William Breeden and Henry Waldo. It stated, during his service as Chief Justice of this court and his prior service as Governor of the Territory, he endeared himself to the members of the bar and other citizens of the Territory by his sterling qualities, his high sense of justice, and his zeal in the public service. On screen is Warren Bristol as third Judicial District Judge in 1878's Lincoln County War period under Catron's direction and with District Attorney William Reinerson, he conducted malicious prosecutions of Alexander McSween and John Tunstall. He also indicted Billy Bonney and other regulators for the killings of William Brady and George Hinman. With Reinerson, he changed Billy's trial venue to Donya Anna County to ensure a hanging. In 1881, he was Billy's judge in Messiah, manipulating the jury to get the first-degree murder verdict. Bristol was born on March 19, 1823, in New York State. He became a lawyer. In 1850, he became a district attorney in Minnesota. From 1866 to 1870, he served in the Minnesota legislature. In 1872, he was appointed by President Ulysses S. Grant as Associate Justice of the New Mexico Supreme Court and District Attorney of the Third Judicial District, encompassing Lincoln, Doña Ana, and Grant Counties. He aided ring plots to outlaw opponents for malicious prosecutions during the anti-ring uprisings in the 1870s. In 1877, Colfax County war activists petitioned President Hayes for his removal for corruption. In 1878, in Lincoln County, his malicious prosecutions contributed to ring murders and the Lincoln County War. 
He served as district attorney for a little over 12 years, resigning in 1884 to practice law in Deming. He died there on January 12, 1890. January 14th, Santa Fe Daily, New Mexican, gave his Supreme Court testimonial by Ringites T.B. Catron, Chief Justice S.B. Axtell, and Judge Simon Newcomb. It stated, In the judicial opinions, he has built for himself a monument which will not soon crumble, resting upon established principles of justice and equity. On screen is William L. Reinerson, a murderer. As a district attorney, he orchestrated Catron's malicious prosecutions and murders in Lincoln County. He authored the February 14, 1878, Friends Riley and Dolan letter plot for murdering Tunstall and McSween. He helped Governor Axtell write the improper proclamation removing Lincoln County Sheriff John Copeland and replacing him with George Pepin. In 1878, he blocked arrest of Tunstall's killers after they were indicted by the grand jury. For the 1879 grand jury, he blocked arrest of Houston Chapman's killers and tried to discount Billy Bonney's eyewitness testimony against them. There, he colluded with Judge Bristol to change Billy's trial venue from Lincoln County to Dona Ana County to ensure his hanging sentence. In 1881, he assisted District Attorney Simon Newcomb, his law partner, and Judge Bristol in Billy's Messiah hanging trial. He possibly threatened Billy's lawyer, Ira Leonard, to make him withdraw to be replaced with Reinerson's friends, court-appointed attorney Albert Jennings Fountain and co-counsel John D. Bale. They ensured the first-degree murder verdict. Born on February 22, 1828 in Kentucky, Reinerson attended college in Indiana. In 1852, he went to California for the gold rush, remaining to study law. In union service with Carlton's California column, he came to Las Cruces. Mustering out in 1866, he stayed there, making mining claims. In 1867, he was elected to the legislature's council. When anti-ring Supreme Court Chief Justice John Potts Slough declared the voting rigged, he murdered him. Represented by ring boss U.S. Attorney S.B. Elkins, Reinerson got off on self-defense. He served in the legislature till 1870. That year, he was admitted to the bar. Ringite Governor William Pyle made him territorial adjutant general. In 1871, he and other campaigning Republicans were accused of attempting to murder Democrat candidates' relatives. The resulting clash, called the Messia Riot, killed nine. In 1872, Reinerson joined Catron and ring eyed John D. Bale, Billy Bonney's future hanging trial co attorney, in a Silver City mining lawsuit. In 1874, with help of Elkins as delegate to Congress, he litigated unsuccessfully to take over the Messiah land grant. In 1876 and 78, Ringite Governor S.B. Axtell appointed him district attorney for the 3rd Judicial District, covering Doña Ana, Grant, and Lincoln counties. In 1878, he was key to the Ring's malicious prosecutions and murders in the Lincoln County War period. In the 1880s, he ranched near Las Cruces. In 1882, with law partner Simon Newcomb, he got the county seat transferred from Mesilla to Las Cruces so his land there could be bought for its courthouse and jail. Reinerson was rewarded. In 1884, with John Riley and James Dolan, he became a partner in Tunstall's stolen Felis River Ranch, renamed the Rio Felis Land and Cattle Company. 
In 1889, he partnered in Catherine's and John Riley's Tularosa Land and Cattle Company. He died on September 26, 1893. His September 30th Rio Grande Republican obituary stated, Expressions of regret are heard on every side on account of this sudden death of one of our best citizens. Reinerson's letters to Catherine showed him as his business partner, loan recipient, and political agent. On November 11, 1888, he wrote on behalf of himself and John Riley about political strategizing. I notice what you say in relation to having mutual understanding in regard to appointments in this territory. Riley and I were talking over this. If we are united, we will succeed. We have, like you, had a hard fight against the enemy. On screen is William Brady, a Lincoln County Sheriff. He was exposed in 1878 by John Tunstall as embezzling county taxes to buy rustled cattle for the house. He murdered Tunstall with his outlaw posse, shielded the murderers, and attempted to kill Alexander McSween. Brady was born on August 16, 1829, in Ireland, immigrating to America in 1851. He joined the Army, serving until 1861. That year, he joined the 2nd New Mexico Volunteer Infantry. Serving as a major at Fort Stanton, he met Sutler store proprietors Emil Fritz and Lawrence Murphy. In 1869, he became Lincoln County's first sheriff. In 1878, he implemented Tunstall's murder. He was killed on April 1st by the regulators to prevent his murdering Alexander McSween that day. An April 13th Las Vegas Gazette article about his killing stated, we are loath to believe that Sheriff Brady had been in any way connected to the death of Tunstall. He had ever borne the reputation of an honest man and good officer. On screen is Jacob Basil Billy Matthews. He was Sheriff William Brady's chief deputy for the malicious prosecution property attachment of John Tunstall's ranch. He then led the Tunstall murder posse. When the regulators ambushed Brady, he was present and likely in the plot to murder Alexander McSween that day. During the Lincoln County War, he attempted ambush killings of regulators, Billy Bonney and Charlie Bowdry, and participated in the final battle. Matthews was born on May 5, 1847 in Tennessee. In the Union Army, he was discharged in 1865. In 1867, he mined in New Mexico Territory and settled in Lincoln County. In 1874, he made a Penasco River Ranch without full title, but fraudulently sold it to John Tunstall in 1877. He used the money to buy into secret partnership in the house. In 1878, he was involved in murdering Tunstall and in the Lincoln County War. He was indicted with others for his murders. In 1879, Catherine got him pardoned by misuse of Governor Lew Wallace's amnesty proclamation. In 1892, he and James Dolan became directors of the Pinasco Reservoir and Irrigation Company. In 1894, he moved to Roswell as manager of the Pecos Immigration and Improvement Company. In 1898, with past Seven Rivers rustler Buck Powell, he unsuccessfully made an Arizona ranch. He was then appointed by President McKinley as Roswell's postmaster, serving six years. He died there on June 3, 1904. His June 4, Santa Fe, New Mexican obituary, calling him a stock raiser and postmaster, added, he was an honest man and his word was as good as his bond in every transaction, public or private. He was an exemplary citizen. 
Matthews was rewarded by getting Tunstall's stolen Pinasco River Ranch. He named it the Pinasco Cattle Company. Matthews stayed in contact with Catron. His August 31st, 1892 letter stated, I congratulate you upon your nomination for territorial delegate, and you can rest assured that I will give you all the support that is in my power. On screen is George W. Pepin, the builder of the house. He was a deputy in the Tunstall murder posse. He was in the regulator's ambush of Sheriff Brady and was possibly in the plot to murder Alexander McSween that day. He was made Lincoln County Sheriff by improper proclamation of ring-eyed Governor S.B. Axtell. He was a multiple murderer and arsonist in the Lincoln County War. He led its massacre at San Patricio. He led the outlaw posse in its final battle. In it, he colluded with Fort Stan Commander N.A.M. Dudley for a legal intervention. He colluded with Dudley to burn down the McSween House to incinerate its freedom-fighting occupants. He used his posse to murder those escaping. He enabled looting of dead Tunstall's store. The next year, he gave a false affidavit defaming Susan McSween's chastity to sabotage her litigation against Commander Dudley. Born in Ohio in 1843, Pepin came to the territory with Carlton's column. He mustered out in Messiah in 1864. Settling in Lincoln, he was the builder for the ring. In 1877, Pepin may have been involved in James Dolan's murder of Hilario Jaramillo so he could marry Jaramillo's widow. In 1878, he was active in all Lincoln County ring atrocities. In 1885, he was made director of a school board. In 1893, he was Lincoln jailer. He was also a deputy to ring-eyed Sheriff George Curry. He died on September 18, 1904. His September 23rd Capitan News obituary stated, the history of Lincoln County would be extremely partial that did not give the deceased the important role in the conduct of its affairs. For Mr. Pepin was one of the oldest settlers in the county. Mr. Pepin was a good citizen, a true friend, and kind husband and father. On screen is Nathan Augustus Monroe Dudley, as Fort Stan commander, he was active in the Lincoln County War. On June 28, 1878, Sheriff George Pepin used him and his troops to raid San Patricio in a failed attempt to murder Alexander McSween. On July 19, he violated the Posse Comitatus Act by intervening for the ring in the Lincoln County War battle. He was treasonously responsible for that battle's murders of Alexander McSween, Harvey Morris, Vincente Romero, and Francisco Zamora, arson of the McSween home, and looting of Tunstall's store. On February 18, 1879, he was a co-conspirator in murdering attorney Houston Chapman, who intended to prosecute him for murder and arson. In his 1879 Military Court of Inquiry, Dudley was represented by Catron's past law firm member, Henry Waldo. In that rig court, he was cleared despite Billy Bonney's eyewitness testimony of his officers shooting to kill civilians in the final battle. Born on August 20th, 1825 in Massachusetts, Dudley began his Army career in 1855 as a first lieutenant in the 10th Infantry, where he was involved in massacring Sioux Indians in Nebraska and plundering their village for artifacts for the Smithsonian Museum. In 1857 to 1858, he was in Utah's Mormon War against Brigham Young. In 1862, becoming a colonel in the Civil War, 
with his 30th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment, he burned down a plantation of a suspected rebel around women and children, foreshadowing his later enabling of murderous arson of the McSween home. After the Civil War, he was transferred to the 3rd Cavalry. In 1871, he was court-martialed and found guilty of drunkenness on duty at Arizona Territories Camp McDowell. In 1877, he was court-martialed again as commander of Fort Union for drunkenness on duty and trying to force a marriage between the rape post-chaplain's daughter and her rapist. Catron represented him, yielding no punishment. On April 5, 1878, he got command of Fort Stanton. He then used his troops to murder anti-ring fighters in Lincoln. In 1879, he was involved in the Houston Chapman murder. New Governor Lew Wallace removed him as commander, but he prevailed in his corrupt military court of inquiry. In 1880, he was returned to command at Fort Union. Until his retirement in 1889, he was in campaigns against Native Americans. He died on April 29, 1910, in Massachusetts. He was buried in Arlington National Cemetery. His May 3rd obituary in Washington's The Evening Star said he was, quote, a retired veteran of the Civil War. Later in his career, he was engaged in many exciting campaigns against hostile Indians. On screen is Henry Waldo from Catron's law firm. He defended Commander N.A.M. Dudley in his rig court of inquiry, covering up his Lincoln County war crimes. Waldo furthered the outlaw myth of Billy the Kid in that court to diminish Billy's testimony against Dudley. Waldo was born on January 16, 1844, in Missouri. He grew up with future Ring co-boss Stephen Benton Elkins. In 1864, he was admitted to the California Bar and became a district attorney. In 1873, he joined the Elkins and Catron Santa Fe law firm after Elkins left to Washington as territorial delegate. In 1875, he made his own firm with ringite William Breeden. From 1876 to 1878, he was Chief Justice. Ringite Governor S.B. Axtell appointed him Attorney General. He served to 1881. In the 1880s, as director of the New Mexican Printing and Publishing Company, he printed the Ring's mouthpiece, the Santa Fe New Mexican. His law partner, William Breeden, was president. He was also director, attorney, or president of multiple railroad companies. He died on July 10th, 1915. His August eulogy in the Santa Fe Magazine stated, his great dignity, integrity of purpose, and unimpeachable character enabled him to deal with political officials and bosses of whatever party without fear or favor. Waldo's letter of February 18, 1866, shows his adulation of Elkins, calling him my most loved friend. He wrote, I am stimulated by your example. I do not expect to emulate it in all aspects but I can feebly imitate it. John D. Bale, appointed by Judge Warren Bristol as co-counsel of Albert Jennings Fountain, represented Billy Bonney and Messia after his attorney, Ira Leonard, withdrew after a likely threat. Their job was to guarantee Billy's hanging sentence. Bale was born in Ohio on July 4, 1825. In 1844, he entered the Army, serving in the Mexican-American War. In 1849, in Illinois, he was admitted to the bar. In the Civil War, he was on the Union side. He then moved to New Mexico Territory. His law practice was in Mesilla, then Silver City. 
He twice served in the legislature's house and once in the council. He was involved with Catherine in legal cases, politicking, and money lending. He died on June 20th, 1903. His obituary in the 1904 minutes of the New Mexican Bar Association claimed he was personally recognized as a man of sterling honor and uprightness. Catron's firm's December 28, 1888 letter shows that Bale worked with them. It requested, can you give us any information in regard to A.M. Connor, whom we are informed is living in Silver City, as to whether he has any property subject to execution? On screen is Patrick Pat Floyd Garrett, a multiple killer. He is the best known participant in Billy the Kid history. He bridged the rings in forcers and thug assassins by getting a lawman's title. In 1880, after being backed by the ring for Lincoln County Sheriff to pursue Billy Bonney, he joined Secret Service operative Azariah Wild, also engaged in the ring for that task. Wild made him a deputy U.S. Marshal with money to pay spies. In ambushes, Garrett accidentally killed Tom O'Falliard and Charlie Bowdry. In the December 22nd ambush at Stinking Springs, he captured Billy. After a hanging sentence in Mesilla, Billy escaped his Lincoln jail. Garrett finally succeeded in killing Billy in a Fort Sumner ambush on July 14, 1881. Garrett was born on June 5, 1850 in Alabama. His family moved to a Louisiana plantation when he was three. In 1868, he went west, possibly killing a black man in Texas. In 1876, as a buffalo hunter, he murdered a teenager in his group named Joe Briscoe. Though his partner called it malicious, Garrett got off on self-defense. Depressive, alcoholic, and unskilled, he went to New Mexico Territory's Fort Sumner. There he worked as a wagon driver, a bartender, and at a hog farm. In 1880, after becoming a sheriff and a deputy U.S. Marshal, he captured Billy. In 1881, after Billy's jailbreak, he killed him. To profit from the killing, Garrett, with a ghostwriter, wrote an 1882 book, The Authentic Life of Billy the Kid. In 1896, he was hired by William Thornton, then governor, and Catherine's past law partner, to apprehend the murderers of attorney Albert Jennings Fountain and his son. He was made Doniana County Sheriff. Accused was Catron's ranching competitor, Oliver Lee, and ranch hand, James Gilliland. On July 12, 1898, Garrett ambushed Lee and his ranch hands. They killed his deputy. They were later acquitted of the Fountain murders. The deputy killing was called self-defense. On October 7, 1899, Garrett killed an accused murderer named Norman Newman while assisting an Oklahoma sheriff in New Mexico. In 1901, Garrett was made El Paso customs collector by President Theodore Roosevelt, but was removed in 1906. He bought a New Mexico ranch the rental of his land to a goat raiser named Wayne Brazel resulted in his murder by him on February 29, 1908, in a heated altercation about selling the goats. Brazel was cleared by self-defense. The Roswell Daily Record front page of March 2nd reported Garrett's death as, Pat Garrett is killed, shot to death, by his tenant Wayne Brazel after a quarrel on a highway, was a Roswell pioneer, received greater notoriety for killing Billy the Kid and causing other desperados to bite the dust, a famous character. 
Garrett stayed connected to Catherine by loans, his biographer Leon Metz, in his 1974 book, Pat Garrett, The Story of a Western Lawman, cited his unpaid note of $500 from February 20, 1901. On June 1, 1904, Catron wrote to him with paternal benevolence reserved for his minions. The time will come when there will be a reappointment and then all these businessmen to whom you are indebted will turn loose against you and you may find it somewhat difficult to get a party to stand by you. Thug assassins were crucial to ring cover-ups by plausible deniability. The higher-ups denied connection to the crimes done by the hitman. The Seven Rivers Ring Rustlers were used as murderers in the Lincoln County War. They were indicted in the April 1879 Lincoln County Grand Jury. By May 1st, Katrin got them pardoned by misstating Governor Lew Wallace's amnesty proclamation. On screen is Robert Ollinger, the best known of the Seven Rivers Rustler murderers. In 1879, he murdered fellow Seven Rivers rancher John Jones. In the Lincoln County War period, he participated in every ring killing. In 1880, he was made a deputy U.S. Marshal by the Secret Service to pursue Billy Bonney. In 1881, Sheriff Pat Garrett made him a deputy to guard Billy, awaiting hanging in Lincoln's courthouse jail. Billy killed him during his April 28, 1881 jail break. The May 3rd, Las Vegas Morning Gazette stated, Bob Ollinger was known all through eastern New Mexico. He was brave as a lion and a handy man with a gun. He lived for a long time in Seven Rivers and was known by all the stockmen in the Pecos Valley. On screen is John Kinney. He and his gang from Mesilla were ring rustlers. In 1878, they were ring murderers in the Lincoln County War. With Sheriff George Pepin, he and his gang did its massacre at San Patricio. In 1881, he was made a deputy sheriff to guard Billy Bonney in his transport from his Messiah hanging trial to Lincoln's courthouse jail. Kinney was born in about 1847 in Massachusetts, fought for the Union, and came to New Mexico Territory in 1868 in the 3rd U.S. Cavalry. Mustering out in 1873 in Las Cruces, he created a major rustling operation. In 1878, he was active in the Lincoln County War. In 1883, he was briefly jailed in Leavenworth for rustling. He then lived in Texas and Arizona. His August 29, 1919 obituary in the Daily Arizona Silver Belt called him a pioneer of the border, stating, he started a civil career in New Mexico and came to be a deputy sheriff where he soon became known for his daring in running down bandits. Captain Kinney stepped aside to give Sheriff Pat Garrett of Lincoln County this honor, but he kept in the saddle and performed equally daring deeds to wipe out the large criminal element. Jesse Evans was involved in murdering John Tunstall and Houston Chapman. Billy Bonney, for his pardon bargain with Lou Wallace, testified against him for Chapman's murder. Evans was born in 1853 in Missouri or Texas into a criminal family. On June 26, 1871, they were arrested in Kansas for passing counterfeit money. In 1872, he came to New Mexico Territory. First, he wrestled with John Kinney, then made his own gang. After his 1878 Lincoln County War involvement, he was arrested in 1879 by Governor Lew Wallace with fellow Chapman murderers James Dolan and Billy Campbell. 
He and Campbell escaped Fort Stanton incarceration on March 15th with possible ring assistance. In 1880 in Texas, he and his gang killed a Texas Ranger during their capture. Getting a 20-year sentence at Texas State Penitentiary, he escaped in 1882, disappearing from history. Complicit press was indispensable for the ring's cover-up propaganda. The Santa Fe New Mexican was central. It was published by Major Ringites William Breeden and his law partner, Henry Waldo. The Las Vegas Gazette was owned by John H. Kugler. He featured the outlaw myth of Billy the Kid. Billy himself ridiculed it in a December 12, 1880 letter to Governor Lou Wallace. He wrote, I noticed in the Las Vegas Gazette a piece which stated that Billy the Kid was the captain of a band of outlaws. There was no such organization in existence, so the gentleman must have drawn very heavily on his imagination. Kugler was controlled by Catron's loans. An example is his July 17, 1889 letter to Catron begging, I wish you would send the money expected from the Marshall Field and Company to me at Kansas City. I will be quite short of funds unless I receive it. The Las Vegas Daily Optic was owned by Russell A. Kistler. From 1880 to 1881, he backed Catron's Secret Service campaign to kill Billy the Kid. In a December 12, 1891 letter, Kistler confidently asked Catron to retaliate against boycotters of his paper. On screen is Ralph Emerson Twitchell, an attorney and politician. He was the Ring's historian. In 1911, he published his five-volume Leading Facts in New Mexico History, hiding the Ring's part in the Lincoln County War and using his outlaw myth of Billy the Kid, he wrote, in Lincoln County, a feud was begun which, in the annals of New Mexico, is known as the Lincoln County War. The cause of this trouble, an era of crime, can be traced to the rivalry existing between prominent cattlemen at the time living in Lincoln and the Pecos Valley, respectively. Others believe that the turbulence that terrorized the entire community was the result of the outlawry established by such desperados as Billy the Kid. Twitchell died on August 26, 1925. The August 31st Albuquerque Morning Journal obituary called him an historian and attorney whose name for nearly half a century has been linked with every movement for the advancement of New Mexico. Twitchell's letters show his political shenanigans for Catron. On October 22, 1892, with Catron running for territorial delegate, the chairman of the Republican Central Committee contacted Twitchell about vote buying, writing, the Democratic majority are Mexicans and a party will be sent there on the day of the election to change it. A little money will be necessary on the day of the election. Over all these ringite scoundrels was the protective umbrella of Washington enablers. Presidents, cabinet members, and senators colluded with co-boss S.B. Elkins and at times with boss T.B. Catron directly. Relevant to Billy the Kid history were President Rutherford B. Hayes, Secretary of the Interior Carl Schurz, and Secretary of State William Everett. As we'll see in later talks, the flip side of cover-ups for Catron's minions was creation of the ring's outlaw myth of Billy the Kid to cover up its own outlawry.